Welcome to part three of our tutorial series on how to apply custom visual designs in Moss. In this part, I'll demonstrate how to prep our custom files in SharePoint Designer. The first step is to open the site in SharePoint Designer. Select Open Site from the File menu. Type or paste the full project URL into the Site Name field. I have already opened our demo site in SharePoint Designer. Here you can see the folders and files which already exist in a default Moss website. Here is the same website as viewed in the browser. We have built out some subsites and web pages as you can see in the navigation, but we haven't made any changes to the design yet. Remember, our goal is to make this look something like this. So let's start back here. We need to add our design assets to the project. This would be the custom CSS file or files, images, and any JavaScript or other assets specific to our design. We created these in the style library for our local HTML template, so we'll look for the corresponding style library in SharePoint Designer. We can simply drag and drop our custom folders into the style library. I will go ahead and demonstrate that with our demo website files. First, I'll open the Style Library folder in SharePoint Designer. Then I can drag the folders from our local Style Library into the SharePoint Designer Style Library. Our folders are prefixed with the project code DEMO underscore, and this helps differentiate them from the default files and folders that already exist in the Style Library. The next step will be to create the master page and page layouts for our custom design. In SharePoint Designer, both the master pages and page layouts reside in the master page gallery, which is located in a folder called underscore catalogs. When we create our master pages and page layouts, once again we should use the project code prefix when naming the files. This will differentiate our custom files from all the other default files which reside in the master page gallery. I prefer to leave all the default files in place because sometimes we might need to grab snippets of code from one of these files. They are a useful resource when building your own custom designs for Moss. Creating the master page and page layouts will be covered in later chapters of this tutorial series. So this concludes part three of our tutorial series. In part four, we will take a look at the base master page that Imagination has created for use in Moss websites.